Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to welcome all of you to uh, my introductory class <clears throat> on the integrated coastal dune management and uh, marine fisheries management. And I'm really glad to meet all of you here online and hope we'll meet um, physically after the Eid vacation. And I also hope to enjoy and learn and fun with you guys who are in the eighth semester of relevant batch in Bangladesh Marine Academy in Nautical Science. My name is Dr. Mohammed Muslimuddin and my nickname is Munna. I'm the current chairman of the Department of Oceanography at the University of Chittagong, Bangladesh. Along with my teaching and research, I'm also running a volunteer organization known as Blue Green Foundation Bangladesh. And this organization is tirelessly working on developing an ocean literary society for a better future generation. I'm also involved with the Asia Marine Educators Association as a founding member or initial member. And I was the immediate ex vice chair of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission Committee for Indian Ocean. So this is all about my professional as well as my environmental activist information. I have done my PhD in art sciences from the University of Ferrara in Italy. And I finished up this in 2015. Before that, I successfully completed my category A certificate course in hydrography from Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping from the University of New Hampshire in the USA in 2011. And I have been graduated from um, an Institute of Marine Sciences at the University of Chittagong um, for my BSc honors in Marine Science and MSc in Marine Science in 2001 and 2003, respectively. And I did a number of postgraduate uh, courses in oceanography from USA, South Korea, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Cyprus, Netherlands, and I have visited. Uh, almost 43 states in, your, in, in the world for my education research to attend seminar, symposium, conference, and training, etc. I have joined as a lecturer in the University of Chittagong in the Department of Marine Science, uh, Institute of Marine Science, in 2005 then um, promoted to assistant professor in 2007 and associate professor in uh, 2016. Finally, when the University of Chittagong has initiated the Department of Oceanography as a different um, separate department, I joined at the Department of Oceanography and then still now I'm serving as the associate professor as well as the chairman of the Department of Oceanography. So this is all about my activities, what I am um, really involved with. I'm involved with research. And this is a <clears throat> CTD rosette, conductivity, temperature, and depth measurement a rosette which included 26 nicks in skin bottle to collect water from the depth of the ocean and it can go up to 3000 meter depth and i was working in in, in atlantic ocean on board of rv oceanus and this is uh then sometime I appeared in, in media for a talk show on blue economy or ocean resource management. Of course, I'm not um, aware of recreation. I do some recreation, but um, see ice skating, ice skiing 
is one of my recreational hobby. I visited the fantastic Mediterranean Sea with the densest water. And then I was a visiting scholar at the University of Cornell in 2016. So this is all about me and in course of time, I hope to be familiar with you guys who are the seafarers and one of the most important stakeholder of our ocean potentiality and blue economy. The course um, I'll be teaching is the integrated coastal zone and marine fisheries management. I hope you all have the course curriculum by this time. That would uh, really help us to share and communicate during the classes. So this course is a three credit course with contact hours of 42 as given from your administration to me. The course code is BNS4231. And the assessment methods would include some terminal and end of examination, some class test assignment quiz and class participation. The class time is still flexible, uh, especially during uh, the online class, but when we'll be uh, in real class, uh, then I think you have the routine already with you, most probably from 11.45 to two hours um, every day, uh, every Saturday. So the objective of this course is to provide an in-depth knowledge on the management of the coastal zone and also on the management of the marine fisheries using an integrated approach to achieve sustainability. Of course, we, have, we will have an aquaculture management topic in our course. So I repeat, the objective of the course is to provide in-depth knowledge on the management of the coastal zone and marine fisheries using an integrated approach to achieve sustainability. So we'll discuss on what is coastal zone, why coastal zone need to be managed, and how we can manage coastal zone and integrated uh, approach is one of the best approach worldwide acceptable for sustainable management of the coastal zone and marine fisheries. We will discuss in details in our classes. So the learning outcomes of this course is the integrated coastal zone management concept, 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 the method, and its implementation on marine fisheries and its sustainability management of aquaculture. So after completing this course, you will have a good understanding on coastal zone and coastal zone management concept. The method, especially the integrated uh, approach and also how it should be implemented for marine fisheries especially for the sustainable goal. So ultimately, you will be um, learning the development of blue economy. So what are the potentialities of blue economy in our country and how can we achieve this potentiality in a sustainable manner? In this course, we will have three broad topics. The first one is coastal zone and integrated coastal zone management. 
The second one is marine fisheries management. And the third one is aquaculture. So in the coastal zone and integrated coastal zone management, we will be discussing on the concept and method, implementation of this concept and method um, to achieve sustainable blue economy, its promotion and future plan, and its uh, practices in various countries. In the marine fisheries management topic, uh, we'll discuss on the coastal and marine ecosystem because, because we need to know about marine environment. So we'll, we'll have an introductory class on the features of the seafloor, the ecological divisions of the marine environment, the concepts on seashore, estuaries, mangroves, coral reef, and the marine food chain and food web. The marine fisheries resources, the way fish migrates from one place to another place, how to detect different fishing grounds and fishing schools, how to study the fish population dynamics, or the changes of uh, fisheries amounts, diversity, abundance, and then how climate change and different ocean vulnerabilities impact on the fisheries resource or the marine fisheries resources, especially sea level rise, ocean acidification using GIS and remote sensing approach for the vulnerabilities management. In the aquaculture section, we'll discuss on the definition, subjective and importance, uh, shore-based aquaculture system, culture method, special attention or emphasis will be given on mariculture because you know marine species culture in the marine environment in the open ocean is the mariculture. And a little bit about culture of live food organisms and feed formulation if time permits. So I would expect all you will success in this course and you will attend the class and we attend it. You will do all of the assignments given and as I said, I hope you all already have the course curriculum with you, especially for the course I'm teaching, um, the Integrated Coastal Zone Management and Marine Fisheries Management. So you should read ahead of time because um, resources are in your hand, resources are in your fingertips. So you can, um, thrive through the internet and you can find out all of the topics online available. So I would expect you read ahead of time. And I would also hope you will not miss any deadlines. And I, will not, I would not tolerate the objections of cheating. If you do any cheating, one strike and you'll be out from my class. So this is all about the introduction of the course or beforehand, the guidelines and regulations, what you should follow to follow up my course, um, which I'm teaching right now. As um, we'll be teaching mainly the ocean environment and this course is a part of oceanography. So we need to know a little bit about what oceanography is. So oceanography is a very young science, you know. Suppose uh, even before um, six, seven years, uh, you don't have oceanography course or integrated coastal zone management course or maritime geography course in marine academy course curriculum. 
it is a young science not only in bangladesh it is also young science worldwide um except some developed countries like usa japan south korea uh, uk um most of the country are now increasing the education level in oceanography but for learning oceanography or studying oceanography you should have um, the traditional scientific knowledge means what you already have oceanography is an interdisciplinary science and it is a multidisciplinary science as well and the oceanography or the ocean the knowledge of ocean that is oceanography is very very important for many aspects of your everyday life most of the professions our life and livelihood our career are directly or indirectly relevant with the ocean that's why we are here to learn uh, this course and all of you know that 71% or sometimes it is said that more than 71% of the global surface is covered by the ocean and the ocean influence the geopolitics the climate pollution population weather recreation food medicine uh, transportation and so all of the economy it is a place for our enjoyment and appreciation so all of the informed citizens on environmental and political issues that involve the earth and ocean around you they should have the knowledge of oceanography they should have the knowledge of uh, coastal zone management approach marine resource management approach and blue economy or circular economy we are not studying oceanography only the facts i have mentioned before it is always so important because the living space volume in the ocean is huge in comparison with the land and i repeat that about 71% of the earth surface is covered by the oceans whereas the terrestrial or the land is only 29% if the earth is flat and the ocean would cover it can you imagine it would the uh, the, the the depth would be almost 2500 meter means 2.5 kilometer average depth of the ocean is 3800 meter and while well, the average height of the land is only 875 meter but luckily this 29% of the land is more or less very transparent to us we all know what is there and even what inside there of the land we know a lot about the mars about the moons all of the planets in the solar system and we have a very clear photograph map of the back side of the moon but unfortunately and unluckily the water which is which covers 71% of the earth is very dark it's not clear to us yet means we have very limited knowledge about the ocean and its resources about the mechanism the ocean contains about the dynamics the ocean experiences so it is very tough to manage the ocean resources it is very tough to to apply the integrated approach for the ocean and that is the main fact why we should integrate our education with the oceanography or the ocean 
As I said, the ocean has a vast amount of living space, but we know very little about it. We even don't know much about what lives there and how do these organisms interact. It is very mysterious. And how are they adapted to this extreme environment, like the water depth with huge pressure, and there is the hot water inside the ocean. Very colorful organisms, very flat organisms, dynamic organisms, blue blood organisms, the, the, the largest organisms living in the ocean. So we should know how these organisms survive and adapt in this extreme environment, dark environment, cold environment, high pressure environment, and even the hot environment inside the ocean. If you see or watch um, geographic channel, sometimes you'll see the fascinating organisms, their life mechanisms, their lifestyles, really attractive and mysterious. Even if they are very tiny, even if they are very simple, but their lifestyle is very complex. And those life, lives are very important with, for our lives and career. And but we know very less about this interaction. We also study need to study the ocean because our weather and climate is more than 90% influenced by the ocean. The carbon dioxide, which are we are worried about the global warming, is also controlled, sequestered, absorbed by the ocean. The El Nino, hurricane, cyclone, storm surge, tsunami, you know, all are ocean born. Our valuable minerals, manganese nodules, well drilling platforms, all are in the ocean. <clears throat> and even for the ocean research, the first climate research clue can only be thrived, only be rescued from the ocean bottom, which is reserved and stored under the ocean. We also need to study ocean because human has a very inextricable relationship, connection with the ocean. So our fisheries, cause of their fluctuations in availability, the commercial and sporting fishes, fin fish or shellfishes, our aquaculture, our salmon, our mussels, all <clears throat> are our daily influencing life materials in our food items, in our career, in our livelihood. The macroalgae, the microalgae, the phytoplankton, zooplankton, source of food, source of drugs is a really impressive, really important. And we need to know, we need to study, we need to research. And that would actually shape and reshape our life and livelihood, our economy, and our future development. If you want to study oceanography, you should know some of the sub-disciplines of oceanography. As I said, oceanography is a, um, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary course, topic, subject. If we subdiscipline, if we discuss about some of the major subdisciplines disciplines of the oceanography, you'll see we'll have biological oceanography, we'll have chemical, geological, and physical oceanography. In the biological oceanography, especially the ocean life from microbes to the wells, wells how they interact with the physical and chemical geological features of the ocean, um, how pollutant affects on them and they affect on the ocean, aquaculture, fisheries, all of those are the subject matter to study. Whereas the trust metals, the salts, the gases, the pollutants, the distributions, the transformations, the chemical reactions, all of those are the topics included in the chemical oceanography, 
um, the plate tectonics, the sedimentation, the volcanism, sediment transport, erosion accretion, geomorphological changes, all of those are the topics under geological oceanography. And finally, the most important one, the current, the atmospheric interactions, the different surface currents, the wave, tides, all of those are the subject matter of physical oceanography. But there are some cross-subdisciplines sub, cross like biological oceanography, geological oceanography, and chemical oceanography. They can be combined for a nutrients and chemical recycling aspects. So we say biogeochemistry is another subdiscipline of subdisciplines. The same way you will have geophysics, geology, and physical oceanography like seismology, paleomagnetics, plate tectonics. You will have a biocomplexity that is ecology in the face of chemical and physical constraints. And you will have a marine genomics, autonomics, census of marine life, diversity, uh, telemetry, all of that. Even there are archaeology, there are law of the sea, rules of navigation, ocean engineering, resource management. So rules of regulation are the nautical science. So as I discussed a little bit about the introduction of oceanography, um, you now, I think, understand that oceanography is a interdisciplinary science. So if you want to study oceanography, you should follow scientific method. So how you can study oceanography? First of all, you should have a curiosity to study oceanography. So you should have uh, your own questions on the event and situations in the ocean. So why and how does this and that happen? Um, why are things um, happening this way in the ocean? If you are curious to learn it, then you will have um, an observations and measurements attempt. If you do observation and measurements attempt, you will develop some hypothesis. And these hypotheses lead you to do some experiment. And this experiment would help you to develop some theory and law. And this development of theory and law again make another curiosity and you do the same in the loop. And this way you can do study the ocean, the oceanographic aspects and the ocean uh, phenomenon. The same way you should study the integrated coastal zone management and fisheries management. So from our today's class, the take home message for you, the take home points for you are, if you want to study ocean, integrated coastal zone management or fisheries, marine fisheries management, you should follow the scientific method. And you should bear in mind that the volume of living space is much more large relative to the land that we think most land is in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, and most of the Southern Hemisphere is full of ocean. Average depth of the ocean is much greater than the average height of the land. And the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian Ocean are the main three giant oceans. Oceanographic is important for our weather, climate, human activities, minerals, paleo environmental studies, etc. And major subdisciplines of the oceanography and newer introduced topics are also introduced almost to you. So, if you have any questions on my today's introductory class, I am here to answer or respond to your questions. Uh, Mr. Durjo, are you here?
Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. So um, this is all about my introduction class for today's lecture. And I think you would contact, keep contact with me and help me in scheduling your, your um, uh, classes uh, in online as well as in, in, in real time. And if you have, again, if you have any question on my today's topics or on the course, please carry on. We'll have uh, three, four, five minutes to discuss and then I will end up for today. So if you don't have uh, any questions. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, yes. I want to say, sir, uh, it will help. Yes, carry on, please. Sir, if you provide us this lecture slide, uh, sir, it will help us to do our self study, sir. Sir, this today's class, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I would, uh, my plan is to provide you the lecture video as well as the class le um, lecture sheet. So don't worry about that. But uh, the answer uh, limitations will not limit it on my uh, lecture sheets only. Be remember. I am lecture did chi among the video to mother ke provide korbo. Our question pattern would, would not be limited on this lecture. I am going to guideline the chi. University education system hoche to provide you guidelines. So to mother ke topic onu jai arik to in details like abara kotha be. But for your betterment or guidelines, I would sure would provide you the lecture because it is recorded and um, also the lecture sheets. Thank you. Any more question? Okay, so uh, my uh, cell number is 017311-00449. Um, if you have any questions, you can call me or you can email me. I will provide my email address in, in, in the WhatsApp group. And I would, um, again, hope all of you would enjoy my course and uh, we will cooperate because without your cooperation, the class will never be successful. And you can comment on my class if it is understandable or it is clear or it is comprehensive or if you want to uh, expect something more, please, Help me in providing your comments. Thank you very much and wish you all the best. Um, see you in the next class.